Okay, so this is uh, not a gameplay video, this is me reading some more Shakespeare. If you recall, I started reading King Henry VI Part 1 a while back, and I intend to continue that now, because it's been suggested that it was quite good. And I thought, well, if at least one or two people like it, then it can't hurt to do some more, can it? So, if I recall, I got to scene four in the play. So, shall we try and begin? And hopefully this will be as good as the previous ones, or maybe better, if you're unlucky. Right, scene four. France before Orleans. Enter on the walls the master gunner of Orleans and his boy. Master gunner of Orleans. Sirrah, thou knowest how Orleans is besieged, and how the English have the suburbs won. Boy. Father, I know, and often shot at them. How oh, unfortunate I missed my aim, Master Gunner of Orleans. But now thou shalt not be thou ruled by me. Chief Master Gunner am I of this town. Something I must do to procure me grace. The Prince Espiels have informed me how the English, in the suburb close entrenched, won't through a secret grate of iron bars in yonder town to overpeer the city, and thence discover how with most advantage they may vex us with shot or with assault to intercept this inconvenience. A piece of ordinance against it I have placed, and even these three days have I watched, if I could see them. Now do thou watch, for I can stay no longer. Ah, oh, that came out wrong. If thou spiest any run, and bring me word, and thou shalt find me at the governor's. And then he exits. Boy, father, I warrant you, take you no care. I'll never trouble you if I may spy them. And then he exits. Enter Salisbury and Talbot on the turrets, with Sir William Glansdale, Sir Thomas Grave, and others. Earl of Salisbury. Talbot, my life, my joy, again return. How wert thou handled being prisoner, or by what means gost thou to be released? Discourse, I prithee, on this turret's top, Lord Talbot. The Duke of Bedford had a prisoner called the brave Lord Ponton to Suntrails. For him I was exchanged and ransomed, but with a baser man of arms by far. Once, in contempt, they would have bartered me, which I, disdaining, scorned and craved death, rather than I would be so vile esteemed. In fine, redeemed I was as I desired. But, oh, the treacherous fast of wounds in my heart, whom with my bare fists I would execute, if now, if I now had him brought into my power. Earl of Salisbury. Yet tellest thou not how thou art entertained, Lord Talbot, with scoffs and scorns and contemnious taunts. In open marketplace produced they me, to be a public spectacle to all. Here, they, here, said they, is the terror of the French, the scarecrow that affrights our children so. Then broke I from the officers that led me, and with my nails digged stones out of, to hurl at the beholders of my shame. Ground, my grisly countenance made others fly. None durst come near for fear sudden death. In iron walls they deemed me not secure. Spread, so great fear of my name amongst them was that they supposed I could rent bars of steel and spurn in pieces posts of adamant. Wherefore a guard of chosen shot I had that walked about me every minute while, and, if I did but stir out of my bed, ready they were to shoot me to the heart. Enter the boy with a linstock, Earl of Salisbury. I grieve to hear what torments you endured, but we will be revenged sufficiently. Now it is supper time in Orleans. Here, through this grate, I count each one, and view the Frenchmen how they fortify. Let us look in, the sight will be much delight thee. Sir Thomas Gargrave and Sir William Glansdale, let me have your express opinions. Where is best place to make our battery next? Sir Thomas Gargrave. I think at the north gate, for there stand lords. Sir William Glansdale. And I here at the bulwark of the bridge, Lord Talbot. For out I see this city must be famished, or with light skirmishes enfeebled. Here they shoot. Salisbury and Sir Thomas Gargrave fall down. Earl of Salisbury. O oh Lord, have mercy on us, wretched sinners! Sir Thomas Gargrave. O oh Lord, have mercy on me, woeful man! Lord Talbot. What chance is this that suddenly hath crossed us? Speak, Salisbury at least, if thou canst speak. How farest thou, mirror of all martial men? 
One of thy eyes and thy cheeks I'd struck off. A cursed tower, a cursed fatal hand that have contrived this woeful tragedy. In thirteen battles Salisbury o'er came. Henry the fifth he first traineth to the wars. Whilst any trump did sound or drum struck up, his sword did ne'er leave striking in the field. Yet livest thou, Salisbury, though thy speech doth fail. One eye thou hast to look to heaven for grace. The sun with one eye vieweth all the world. Heaven, be thou gracious to none alive, if Salisbury wants mercy at thy hands. Bear hence his body, I will help to bury it. Sir Thomas Gargrave, hast thou any life? Speak unto Talbot, nay, look up to him. Salisbury, cheer thy spirit with his comfort, thou shalt not die whilst. He beckons with his hand and smiles on me, as who would say, when I am dead and gone, remember to avenge me on the French. Plantagenet I will, and like thee, Nero, play on the lute, beholding the towns burn. Wretched shall France be only in thy name. Hear an alarm, and it thunders and lightens. What, sir, is this? What tumults in the heavens? Whence cometh this alarm and this noise? Enter a messenger, messenger. My lord, my lord, the French hath gathered head, the Dauphine, one, one Joan the Picure joined, a holy prophetess now risen up, is come with a great power to raise the siege. Here Salisbury lifteth himself up and groans. Lord Talbot, hear, hear, how dying Salisbury doth groan. It irks his heart, he cannot be revenged. Frenchman, I'll be a Salisbury to you. Pucelle or puzzle, dolphin or dogfish, your hearts I'll stamp out with my horse's heels, and make a quagmire of your mingled brains. Convey me Salisbury into his tent, and then try what these dastard Frenchmen dare. Alora McZunt. And that is scene four of King Henry the Sixth, part one. Perhaps I overacted a little, perhaps I underacted. Hey, I'm not an Oscar winner, give me a break. And I'm reading at the same time, rather than actually acting in a play. So there's that. Anyway, that's a huge strain on my voice, even with warming my voice up beforehand. So I'm only going to do a scene at a time. And that's it for that one anyway. So I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you also enjoyed my lovely um, white noise screen I've got going here as well. It's wonderfully entertaining, isn't it? So that's that.